Well, there's a couple of things that seem to be uh, pretty standard. One is there's a lot of emotional games and weeks, and two is if I look one more time and see somebody say that you're playing a team that's won four out of the last five, I feel like that's been an ongoing saga. But there's no question came off an emotional game. Uh, I thought we uh, put ourselves in a position to win the game. Um, but our players handled things about as well as you could. Uh, I think we didn't make the plays down the stretch. And, uh, you know, I uh, was disappointed in that, to be very honest with you. Watching the film, we had opportunities, we just didn't get them done. So tomorrow night will be another emotional night. You know, our first game back on campus with our fans. And make no mistake about it, uh, this will never go away. As time heals, as they say, it'll, you know, time heals everything, uh, one way or another. And nor do we really want it to go away. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, our students um, are respected, and, and we want to keep them in our thoughts and prayers. And, and the ones that are still alive in the hospital, we want to keep them in our thoughts and prayers. So it's not like we're moving on. Uh, we are just moving on to the next game. Thoughts and prayers are remaining the same. Um, in Indiana, uh, it is one of the hotter teams in the league. Uh, Trace Jackson, kid that we recruited here a lot, and I've watched him grow as a player. And I think he took small steps for three years, and maybe he works for NASA, he just took a giant step for Indiana at least, not mankind, but he took a giant step for Indiana. He's really um, improved his game with his ball handling. He's improved his game with his strength. I think he's improved his game with his passing ability and his willing to pass. Uh, I thought at one time he was a black hole. He went in and didn't come out. Uh, now I think he's uh, added different dimensions to his game. He's very hard to double. He's very hard to... Uh, catch the ball anywhere on the floor and get to wherever he wants and he's got as good a first step as uh, any player at any position. So uh, he's a load. Jalen Hood Shafino has really come on since our game. He's been not quite as consistent. Typical to every freshman has a big game than an average game. We did a very good job against him the first time but uh, he has definitely made progress and is a better player now than he was early. And Race Thompson just came back, uh, one of the better power forwards in our league uh, from his injury, and he too has gotten healthier, which has helped get them healthier. Um, it's a group when you double a guy like uh, Jackson Davis, uh, Kopp has uh, turned into a, a very reliable three-point shooter. Uh, so they have a guy they can kick out to. and. Uh, He's uh, hit 12 threes in the last five games, so he is uh, a very valuable part. I think they've got a couple of, of role players that play their roles to the nth degree. He's one of them. Question. Um, you, you face somebody a second time. Sometimes it worked the first time, sometimes it, it didn't so speak. I'm wondering what you your takeaway was from the approach on Trace. It seems sort of like you know, if you're trying to pick your poison, you, you drank from both cups, so to speak, the last half. Very good way to put it. Uh, there's truth to that, so I think we're going to have to mix some things up. Uh, I don't think there'll be a steady diet of anything. Um, so we'll try to mix them up a little bit, you know. But really, Trace is going to get his 20 points. I mean, he's he gets enough touches, he gets enough opportunities, and he's a phenomenal player. So... Uh, the game plan won't be just to stop Trace. We got beat last time because uh, I think it was Bates hit five out of six threes. And uh, I'm not sure he's hit that many since, um, but he did. And uh, somebody else hit three, I think. So, uh, yeah. oh yeah, Galloway hit three. So two surprise guys hit eight threes. And, uh, and that's the problem, as you say, you know, when you, people want you to double giving up threes, two point guarded threes, then you're giving up 30 points by the post guy. It's, uh, it's a uniqueness in this league this year where we've got that problem with 
more than a few guys. You know, Michigan the other night, uh, McDaniel's did a pretty good job. You know, although he got segment of nine at in the beginning of the game, but it's usually the other people that you got to worry about. The, the great ones are probably going to get what they get, um, and uh, I have no regrets on what we did at Michigan because I think we did. You know, it wasn't kickouts that got us; it was some other things. But uh, I think there won't be a steady diet of anything, to be very honest with you. How did you kind of move forward on this season? You talked about how you know the tragedy is not going away, but also you talked about returning to the normalcy. And I'm wondering how you kind of balance those two things. Yeah, I, I, I said that was going to be the hardest thing for me is figuring out how to balance um, normalcy and and uh, and tragedy. And um, you know, I'm not sure we'll ever do a great job of it. There's, there's not enough time in the year left. You know, this isn't going away today, tomorrow. Unfortunately, for some families, it's not. It's not going away in a lifetime. And uh, I hope we do enough here that it doesn't go away in a lifetime either. But uh, as I said, unfortunately, the world moves on, and you have to learn how to do that. That's part of the process of being a young man or woman into, you know, getting older and. Uh, so, you know, what we've tried to do with our players is yesterday we had a walkthrough and a film session and, and still talked about it because I think it'll be another emotional night tomorrow night just being back home. And, uh, you know, who knows how everybody responds, but uh, we've got to be able to do the things basketball-wise to take care of the business we've got to take care of and, and then be there support-wise for players or people that deal with it in different ways. And, I'm not sure I have a great balancing act for that. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm learning on the run myself. You know, uh, I will have a, a book for somebody now that goes through this later on in life, but um, I'm still working my way through it myself. Um, uh, the rebound against you, obviously, that we saw the other night. How the matchup certainly hurt too big, especially when you had Joey Malik in there. How much of that do you think is, is kind of a, just a circumstance of how that went with the, the two bigs? Or, or is there a concern right now at all? Right now has been a few games here and there where the offensive rebounding wasn't great yeah. for their team. You know, yeah, the rebounds in concern this year. You know, Marty has not rebounded the ball as well <clears throat> because some of the size in there, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those cases where I'm disappointed in one thing. We need to put more weight on Monty, you know, and uh, – so he gets banged around in there. Uh, but uh, I think the more and more we get Malik at the three and and have a, maybe a bigger forward to go along with Joey, and I, I think you're going to see Jackson playing a little more maybe in, in Carson and uh, and maybe even playing Carson and Jackson together in Carson. And so, you know, now this team isn't as big. Um, that was uh, – that was probably the biggest lineup in college basketball in that situation with the two bigs, maybe in Arizona, I think. So, uh, you know, we blame it on us. We weren't maybe ready for it. And uh, and yet uh, <laughs> I look back and maybe if Howard doesn't get hurt, they don't, they don't do some of the things they did. So uh, hard to say. We still had enough chances, even with all that. A minute 50 left, the game was still tied. We did enough to win the game, no matter what they played. Uh, but rebounding is is a is not a strength of this team that we have to get better at because uh, I think they got 12 or 15 offensive rebounds against against Illinois, and that'll be uh, one of the battle cries for sure is is, uh, is uh, balancing that that rebounding uh, numbers out. You mentioned about Jackson and Carson. I'm wondering when you went back and watched maybe that first 20, 30 minutes of the game, what things did you see in terms of how those guys were working against Dickinson that can carry forward for you guys defensively? Well, Dickinson's a, a load, and he's, uh, you know, at 7 1, he's, he's bigger. He's not as athletic uh, as Trace or as strong uh, as Trace. Uh, but where I think Trace has made it harder on everybody is he's putting the ball on the floor so well. And he's very patient, you know, where early he was impatient. 
I think he's very patient now. He's, you know, he's what you, like I said, I've always pulled for the kid because I, I love the family and the kid. But I pull for him now other than tomorrow night because it's kind of what you hope college basketball is supposed to be, you know. Kid came in, and a good player. Got to be a pretty good player, a real good player. And then he made this monstrous jump between his third and fourth year, you know, where, where I think we get condemned for uh, staying in school. And uh, he's a kid that it's really benefited him. So uh, I think it's been, uh, you know, good for the game, but not necessarily good for Michigan State. But he's, he's different um, than almost any of the other centers, you know, the kid from Illinois or, or even Edie in his own way because he moves so well and he's so athletic. And, in one dribble, he can get from the top of the key almost to the rim. So uh, we'll, we'll, we've learned some things. Uh, we think we've got some things to help, but um, I'm going to focus on Jackson, on Trace, but um, I'm going to focus and make sure those three-point shooters don't hit those uh, eight threes that those two guys hit. Just, just as a follow-up, part of, how, how much of those two, Jackson and Cooper, improved? Yeah, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, we always look at Jackson and we say, God, he's slow. You know, you watch him run and he's slow. But, you know, he gets a lot done and probably more and and more, um, you know, whether he gets up on ball screens enough yet, you know, that's taking some time. It took Marty time. Um, that is still in the works. Uh, Jackson is, a, is a, uh, a better offensive player than any of them. And... Uh, and Carson's a better defensive player because he's got 6'11 body, he's got long arms, and he's got length, and he's got athleticism. So I think they both improved a lot if I looked at a lot of things, you know, and it just keep, continuously makes me wonder what it could be like if, you know, if we would have had all those guys together instead of piecemealing here and there, but maybe this is the time of year to get it all right. Tom, I'm wondering, based on what you saw Saturday, mentioned you had a discussion with your team about what Tuesday night might be like for an emotional night. How do you think those guys are handling <coughs> their emotions based on your assessment so far? You know, it's the, first of all, I thought they did a phenomenal job. Did we run out of gas at the end? Was that part of it? You know, was it emotional? Uh, I don't know. You know, were they drained? I don't know. Um, you know, as I talk to different psychologists and people uh, that I have for the last week, uh, and I think I told you this, that everybody says, you know, uh, everybody handles it differently. That's one. But the other thing is that, you know, you probably know your players better than some professionals can help them. And so I've done a lot of, yesterday was a lot of time with a lot of different players. And But, you know, athletes are macho people. You know, sometimes arrogant people. But some of that is needed to be successful. And the one thing that, uh, that was the first speech I gave to him. In fact, I said it at the vigil, you know, I cry, you know. I, I show my emotions, good or bad. I'm not afraid to, but it's taken a few years probably. Most athletes uh, do not show their emotion like that, especially in a sad way, because it's like uh, male testosterone, you know, like we're supposed to be, uh, uh, you know, so tough and handle every problem. And, uh, you know, the toughest guy in the world can't handle these problems. It has nothing to do with strength. It has nothing to do with toughness. So I just try to tell them it's okay to, to vent. It's okay to, you know, be upset. It's okay to, to communicate about it. You know, don't be afraid to tell me how you feel. But that's all a lot to do in a couple of days, you know, and adjust to that when they've been kind of the other way for most of their lives. So we're working on it. It's, uh, it's been good. I mean, our guys have been great. Our people around here have been great. Um, you know, everybody's done their job the best they can do it. Some of it is time heals. And uh, that too is different for every individual. And I have to be there to support that and yet push. That's the balancing act that we talked about earlier that you asked me, Kyle, you know, how do you do both? Um, if 
I had that answer, I'd write a good book. But I'm working on it. There's a question related on Saturday that was very touching at the Chrysler Center. So I'm just kind of curious what you guys have planned for tomorrow night in terms of maybe what you might be doing pregame or if you could let us in on what you, what you guys are going to do. Well, I would let you in if I knew. Um, you know, the one great thing about our people here, and I think it was the same down there, Juwan, and, um, you know, there, I'm sure there will be some things that go on, but they know that I got enough on my plate, and so I have not been involved in the pregame or the, the game situation on that. I'm sure I'll get uh, told it as it all comes together, but uh, I wouldn't hide it from you. I, I, I really wouldn't. And if, if need be, I'll try to find out. Uh, that's, uh, you know, I just, I just hope that uh, the kids that we lost, the kids that we still have, the kids that have been through it, um, hope we honor them all and respect, you know, what each and every one of them, how they feel. And, uh, but I, I've said it and I'll say it a million times, I said it that night of the vigil. Being alone is not the answer. Some people could think it's the answer. To me, it's never the answer. Uh, that's why, you know, teammates on a team have to help each other. Uh, we're all teammates now of a campus and a community, and we have to help each other. And I think the more time we spend around each other, the better. Not being away. I know there's going to be protests and things. Uh, I'm vehemently against because I think uh, we need each other to uh, to comfort each other and to help each other through tough times. So hopefully it'll be um, respectfully great. Tom, when you when you write that book, the last seven days of your old chapter. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a roller coaster to say the least because <clears throat> in that time you got the Michigan Michigan State you know you you want to call Lou Brock me himself and come up with the greatest speech known to mankind and then you got the dad in you that uh, that <laughs> you think of it from a parent standpoint and all the parents and, and that's why I told you that the night before that game like I've done a couple other times here in the past I figured out what I was going to say I tried to whether we win or whether we lose because a win would have been great for Michigan State. It'd make no difference. The parents in that hospital trying to fight for those kids' lives and for the ones that were lost at the funerals that day. And a loss is in the same boat. So, yeah, it's been a um, figuring out how to balance that, figuring out how to handle that. Uh, it's been something that I can't say I'm. I'm going to be better for in the future because I hope it never happens again in the future. But uh, I was very unprepared for it, the present, and uh, and I think with the help of a lot of people, we did the best we could do. And I want to reiterate something that I said that night. Um, the situation uh, wasn't the reason we lost the game. Um, we lost the game because we didn't do the things we needed to do and uh, I don't want sympathy for anything because sympathy should go to the people I don't want to be taken off the hook for anything because we played well enough to win that game and didn't do it but uh, yeah the last seven days will be a hell of a chapter in anybody's book uh, my book would be small compared to the parents that lost their kids and the ones that are fighting for them small but uh, it will forever I told my son the day of the game 
we were warming up at one o'clock. We were just kind of <clears throat> going through our shoot around that day. And I said, this will be a day you'll never forget. Dramatic, truthful, pick and choose. My opinion, it'll be a, a day I'll never forget. And there's been a few in my lifetime that as they say, me, know where I was when John F. Kennedy died. Know where I was in 9 11. Know where I was when I got the news of what happened here. Know where I was the night of that game. Um, there'll be a, probably a dozen in your life that you'll never forget. I just made sure he knew he should remember this day and. Uh, try to do everything he could do in his power to make sure one of those days never happens again. Yeah? Another topic I'm not sure how much you're dialed in with right now, but it's still a reality, is the, the Minnesota game that got lost. I know there's a lot of things up in the air in terms of when, if, all that. Do like, you have any clarity yet at this point? <laughs> I don't. Uh, as of right now, I don't. The, the best clarity I have is that they are trying their hardest to work it out, and the schools have been great. Uh, ben Johnson's been unbelievable. Um, I think Rutgers is involved. Uh, but the best I've heard so far is that last week we'll play Tuesday, which I think is a 9 o'clock game, come to think of it, Thursday, Saturday. And uh, that's when we got to play. That's when we'll play. Uh, it's not, that's not etched in stone, no. It's not even a, I mean, it's, it's the best I've been given. You mentioned something the other night about that sort of smaller lineup that you went to and hoping they could make Michigan pay on the other end and being unable to do so. And I'm wondering, I mean, obviously that's a group of James injuries and leaks that you haven't been able to fully explore throughout the season. I'm wondering how much hope you still have for that group as <coughs> a group that can offensively create problems for other people down the stretch. Well, I still think that's a very possible, but in that game, you know, Marty got in foul trouble too. I mean, we didn't do it, if I said it that way, we didn't do it to try to exploit it on the other end because we were scoring enough. We did it out of necessity, to be very blunt and honest with you. And uh, at least we wanted the most experienced players on the floor. And, you know, things got to still happen. I mean, Kobe's got to hit a shot that he fumbled and, and hit it. And uh, the ball's got to bounce the right place to get the rebound, you know. I mean, there's a lot of things that got to happen. but. I do think that with most teams, um, that lineup could be still utilized. As you said, uh, you know, up until the last week and a half, Malik wasn't practicing all the time. So we have not spent a lot of time on it. Those are all things that we're still trying to find our team, you know, with uh, two weeks left. And that's okay. You know, I think some teams last year found their team with one game left. And it, worked out for him. So uh, I got still got a lot of faith in this team. I think I have a lot of faith in my staff. Um, what I don't have a lot of faith in is <laughs> where the country is right now as far as teams. You know, you look at the Big Ten, um, there are so many teams that are eight and seven. Or it's, it's just amazing. You watch last night's game with, uh, you know, Sam Hoiberg plays 32 minutes in the game. And, unbelievable job you know it's it keeps proving its point talent doesn't always win where's that play and I, I, I enjoy all I could think of is his mom and his grandparents because when we played there and I started their other son um, how proud they must have been that night so it's it's a crazy league but you might see some of that lineup uh, certain games for sure and uh, but we do got to practice it a Focus was, under, focus was understandably tough the other night for all the right reasons. Mm -hmm. Not that tomorrow won't be emotional because you got the first home game. And I hate to even ask about focus. You got students that are going to their first classes today. But will it be easier in a basketball sense to focus in this game than perhaps in that game or, or not? Yeah, you know, I mean, you're. Pinching pennies on that one. It's uh, 
you know, I mean, that is our rivalry game, but this is our next most important game. And um, I said, time will heal you, mm -hmm. not two days. <laughs> you know, it's going to take more time than that. And uh, hard to say how our students will react to everything. You know, it's students have been so good. You know, at the the way they stayed in place and and did the things they were supposed to do that night. Um, that doesn't always happen on college campuses. And yesterday, there was an incredible amount of people on this campus. A lot of parents came up. A lot of I didn't know everything. My son went to it, but I was trying to do my day job a little better, and so I was here. But um, he said there was an incredible happening on campus, you know, where, and that's my whole point, you know. Uh, I hear about people wanting to be away. I understand why. Um, I beg and plead that people get back to normal as fast as they can. And the ones that need help, let's help them. And the ones that um, are ready to get back, let's make you guys helpful to the rest of the people because there is nothing like the people next to you. Nothing. I've believed that my whole life. You know, it's united we stand, as they say. And uh, I, I think tomorrow night, I don't know, I don't know, my own players will, will handle it, you know, but uh, I'm sad that I have to be a part of that for the reasons of what happened. I'm honored to be a part of that to help bring some normalcy to these kids that have been through so much in the last three or four years and so, so much in the last week. So that's gonna be the way I'm gonna approach the game. And uh, I guess I'll see you all there.